in 2020, they were back to where they started in 2013, except worse because the balance sheet was even bigger. It's not going to take seven years this time. It might be more like seven months. And the reason is twofold. Number one, we're more leveraged and the stock market is more bubbly. And so the whole thing's more vulnerable. Number two, the market has seen this movie before. Like, hey, we watched this play out. We know it, we know it doesn't work. And the Fed blocks. Now, so if the Fed suddenly slams on the brakes, says we're not going to keep raising rates along the lines I projected earlier. Okay, that might give the stock market a boost. And you can't assume that won't happen you got to watch for that but i would expect that things would have to get pretty ugly in in all of that before the fed got that message on the other hand if if powell gets confirmed and feels like it's his last term and here's his chance to be paul volcker and he's just going to keep raising rates he said my job is to get inflation under control the rest of you people you're responsible for fiscal policy and tax policy and spending and um you know shutting down the keystone pipeline welfare and all that that's on you, not me. I, my job is to get rid of inflation. If he does that, and he could, he might, you're looking at a recession, kind of looks like the global financial crisis and hope it doesn't. And there is a difference between extreme recession and financial crisis. They're two different things, but they can happen at the same time as, as did happen in 2008. In this video, Jim Rickards talks about the challenges and potential risks faced by the Federal Reserve in managing the economy. The central theme revolves around the delicate balance that the Fed must strike between preventing a stock market crash and avoiding a severe recession. Jim raises concerns about the Fed's ability to have perfect information, citing flawed models and the possibility of being behind the curve in recognizing economic challenges. The distinction between a recession and a financial crisis is highlighted, with historical examples used to illustrate that these two phenomena can occur independently. Jim Rickards emphasizes the difficulty the Fed might face in choosing between preventing a financial crisis or accepting a recession as a trade-off. The reference to Paul Volcker's actions in the 1980s adds historical context, showcasing a deliberate choice to induce a severe recession for the purpose of combating inflation. However, Jim Rickards notes that the current economic landscape is more intricate, with additional considerations such as systemic risks and the potential for a recession triggering a financial crisis. In conclusion, Jim Rickards underscores the complex decisions the Federal Reserve must make, acknowledging the uncertainties and trade-offs inherent in steering the economy and avoiding undesirable outcomes. Before we get into the video, can you help me to give that like button a little touch? All right, let's get into it. Would the Fed back off if it became apparent that they were going to cause a stock market crash, a disorderly collapse, and a severe recession? The answer is almost certainly yes. But the problem is it might happen uh, right. a anyway. In other words, they, they might have gone too far. And this almost happened in 2018, and that was my mm -hmm. point. It was that by, the, by the time they realized their mistake, it might already be too late. So that's one danger, which you, if, they, if they had perfect information, oh, gee, we went too far, gee, we couldn't pull this off, we need to back off. They might back off exactly as you described, but they don't have perfect information. They have flawed models. They tend not to look at history and they could behind the curve. They could crash the car before they knew it was out of control. It's like s slamming on the brakes on ice. You can slam on the brakes, but you're going to go for a long time before the car stops. So that's one problem. This, the second problem is you, you have to separate, as I said, recession, even severe recessions from financial crises. In 1998, we had a financial crisis, but no recession. Uh, in 1994, we had a financial crisis, no recession. In 2000 and 2020, we had a severe recession, no financial crisis. That was not a financial crisis. In 2000, 2001, we had a, the, the NASDAQ collapsed 80%, but there was only a very mild recession and that was not a financial crisis. So the Fed might say, and again, might, cause who knows, but they might say, well, of course we don't want a financial crisis. Now, to your point, Nick, nobody wants that and they do get out of control, but we're not worried about that. You know, we learned our lesson in 2008. We had Dodd-Frank uh, and I had this discussion with uh, uh, James Gorman, the CEO of uh, Morgan Stanley. I briefed their board and they, they gave me a lot of pushback. They said, well, you don't understand, Jim, we've, we've, uh, we've, you know, we have more capital and greater liquidity and less leverage and better credit. And I, I granted, I said, you, you're absolutely right. It's a nice job. You're a stronger bank now than you were then. But in a financial crisis, it doesn't matter 
the, the, the problem is systemic. In other words, as an individual bank, you may be better off, but if the whole system's collapsing, you can't necessarily withstand that. So they, they don't want that. But what if they said to themselves, you know what, we don't want a financial crisis, but we don't think that's going to happen. But we'll, but maybe we'll just have to bear a recession. Volcker knew what he was doing. Volcker knew that there was going to be a recession. And the recession of 1981-82 that he caused was, at the time, the worst since the Great Depression. Now, we've surpassed that twice since then, uh, 2008 and uh, 2020, although it's hard, it's hard to know what 2020 was. I mean, down 36% in two months and up 38% the next two months. I mean, what what is that? But... Uh, but at least in technical terms, um, we've had two worse recessions, 20, 2008 and 2020 since then. But at the time, and I, I began to live through that, I was around, uh, that was the worst recession. But Volcker knew that would happen. He said, that's the price we have to pay to break the back of inflation. And he did. And by 1986, inflation was like 2% or 1.8%. Now, there was far less worry about financial crises at the time. Uh, because remember, this was before the repeal of Glass-Steagall. You know, commercial banks, no one really cared about investment banks. They could fail. So what? They cared about the commercial banks, and they had a pretty good handle on that. Um, so they weren't worried about financial crises. But today you would be, uh, be for the reasons we mentioned. So the so there are two possible major blunders here, but again, don't under, underestimate the Fed's ability to do both. One <laughs> one is that they could they could decide they don't want a recession, but not know until too, until it was too late. They just tighten into it, don't know until it's too late, and then the damage is done. The other one is they could sign up for a recession, say, yeah, sorry, but that's the price of getting inflation under control and trigger a financial crisis that nobody wants but could happen anyway so you know it's kind of so encrypted uh, you know take your pick severe recession but we know it's coming recession that causes a financial crisis that we didn't want or just let the inflation rip what's the good outcome there what, what's the good one yeah but i think i think those are the three choices i think you're right in the face of these complexities our discussion leaves us with three potential scenarios the risk of unwittingly tightening into a recession, the prospect of accepting a recession for inflation control, or the challenging choice of allowing inflation to run rampant. The Federal Reserve stands at a crossroads, and the decisions they make in the coming months may well shape the economic landscape for years to come. As we conclude our exploration, it becomes clear that the path ahead is fraught with challenges and decision-making. The balancing act between preventing a stock market crash and avoiding an unintentional recession places the Federal Reserve in a formidable position. The lessons from 2018 serve as a stark reminder that perfect information eludes them, and the consequences of their decisions may only become apparent once it's too late to correct. The historical perspective sheds light on the dual nature of economic downturns, where financial crises and recessions don't always go hand in hand. Drawing parallels to Paul Volcker's bold strategy in the 1980s, we ponder whether the Fed might consider accepting a recession as a necessary sacrifice for taming inflation.